Welcome to this video where we will uh, tackle the hands on number 10. So we are requested to open this image, which is composed of uh, seeds of uh, orchidae. And um, the idea was to, uh, the, the request from the biologist who provided me with this uh, image was to count the number of seeds despite the fact that they were somehow touching each other. So the seeds are this uh, brownish uh, and uh, uh, ellipsoidic, ellipsoidic uh, uh, shapes. And they are, uh, for uh, orchidae, they are um, surrounded by uh, a shell, a nested shell. And this is, this is actually the, the parts which are touching each other and preventing uh, the task to be an easy one. So, of course, you could take time to, to, to locate them uh, on the, uh, on the uh, backlight table in order to have an easy task. But, of course, it's also uh, much faster to just throw the, uh, the, these seeds on the table and just take, take a snap. So that's a classical one. So I propose in this hands on to address it in two ways. One would be the classical way and the other one would be the machine learning more data driven way. So for, for, the, for the classical way, uh, if we want to revisit as it's the, this is the last uh, hands on before the more advanced um, uh, uh, topics that we will uh, address uh, later in the course. Um, so uh, since it's the last example, we can uh, revisit what we have seen so far, that when we had a, a color image, maybe it was useful to, to have a look at what was happening in the color, uh, different color space, and in the HSB part here, it's really interesting to see that we have for saturation something which is very well contrasted. So let's take this, uh, this part, which is interesting. And then uh, one could think uh, if we want to withdraw the nested part of applying a filter, and this filter could be something like a minimum, keeping the minimum, um, uh, keeping the minimum, yes, and see that actually if I uh, increase a bit the, this, I will somehow completely withdraw the nested part and then it will be very easy to adjust the threshold on this image and being able to count all the objects. Of course, the shape of the object is no more correct due to the effect of the, uh, of the, the filters, but somehow the number of them will be absolutely correct. So if I, I, I do apply here, and then I just have to uh, do a set measurement, maybe measure the... Um, Area and do an analyze particle on this. Maybe I will exclude things which are touching the edge. And okay, tells me that I have okay, so uh, something uh, already. Uh, so let's um, display result. Clear result is okay. Let's analyze. Okay, and it tells me I have 19 seeds, which is correct for this image. So this is uh, the classical way where uh, an expert, uh, myself here, was selecting properly the different filters, and I could do it very fastly because I know this example already, and uh, I'm uh, um, uh, exercised to do this kind of, uh, of stuff. But maybe for this kind of a problem, you would also like to maybe avoid having to think about, yes, I'm going to change the color space, then I'm going to think about a filter which could make uh, uh, something very nice and withdraw the, the nested part. And this is where uh, this plugin called um, uh, uh, Weka trainable Weka segmentation here is very useful. So basically what you have to do for, for this is just to indicate to the, uh, so indicate here to the, um, 
computer that this is a class of background, this is the class, uh, second class of uh, 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 nested part, maybe the seed itself, I can call it seed if I want, uh, will be more in this part. And I just need then to train the classifier, so to ask the uh, computer to um, uh, classify uh, the rest of the pixels in the image based on the training uh, data set that I provided, uh, that I provided him. So, based on these uh, few examples, uh, it will try to uh, find rules to make this uh, correction. So here, this correctly. So here, I think I uh, I forgot to add this to C. So there was only uh, two two classes. So let's uh, train it again. So the this is what I have here, which is more or less already not that bad. So maybe I'm not completely satisfied with this part, which I. Could add a little bit more of examples uh, here and now I would say that I'm pretty satisfied with the result especially if I focus on the part which is dedicated to the seeds itself so I can add a few uh, more examples on the seed here and we'll train the classifier okay maybe not that much of a help so I can double click on it and withdraw it and retrain uh, the classifier and I had many better results uh, in this case. So the nice, the nice things about uh, this is that then I can uh, create results and I got this uh, image. This image can be uh, put in uh, 8 bit, so we don't need the color at all, and then threshold in order to keep the correct class, so the correct gray level, the, the gray level that which corresponds to exactly the class that I'm interested in, which seems to be the last class. Here, here I am, and I am rather happy with this. Of course, I could do a little bit of uh, post-processing, like binary, fill holes maybe, and also a little bit of uh, uh, closer or erosion to withdraw some of the small uh, parts and um, maybe if I keep only the big ones um, I should be it should be good enough uh, to have uh, a count a correct count of uh, the, uh, the the seeds so here I my only expertise was to uh, just uh, so I, I could do the um, and analyze particles again and have a similar measurement provided that I take only the big object, so I should measure somehow the size of this object and keep only the big ones. So here my expertise was pretty small, actually I just had to uh, annotate uh, the, the image to indicate to the computer some of the uh, pixels that I, I was interested in, and I, I could get a pretty uh, good result. The nice thing is that if I had similar images, I just need to save the classifier uh, here on my computer, okay? And if I have other images which are similar, other images of orchid, orchid uh, with different number, different spatial configuration, but same um, light lighting conditions, uh, then I should only uh, when I reopen my uh, trainable uh, um, uh, segmentation plugin, load this classifier and create the result, and I got directly. Uh, the, the result on this without having to annotate. So if my annotation is representative of uh, how good or how uh, it would like in uh, it would look like for any of the image I'm supposed to uh, be likely to, to process, then only this uh, beginning of annotation can do the job. Uh, here it was rather black box in the way we use it, but actually we can open uh, the black box and see what it's doing. And actually the good thing is, is that um, what it's doing here is just computing some of these filters that we've been talking about. And uh, these filters are now words that you know, Gaussian blur, variance, uh, entropy, we've been talking about a little bit, mean, maximum, median, and so on. So, of course, you could, uh, if you want to control better, you could select all of them. If you don't, well, one option would be to select all of them and to let the computer do, but obviously it would be much uh, longer to, to compute. And another way is to read a little bit more about how these filters works and which one would be a priori 
uh, good options to solve the problem you're faced to. So uh, in this case, we have some stuff which are pretty flat and others which are very well um, um, uh, uh, contrasted. So a variance filter could be uh, interesting. Uh, maybe a maximum or a minimum a filter could be also something interesting, a mean. And maybe we could put an entropy, which is also uh, uh, there for good reasons. Maybe we can withdraw difference of Gaussians. Uh, here, you remember that for each filter we were uh, using uh, previously when we were doing convolution, we were asked to provide with the size of the image. So the size of the image is here, exactly here. And actually, it allows you to have different um, uh, type of uh, different size of uh, image. So you start from one uh, sigma equal to one to six to uh, sigma equal to sixteen. So it's going to take a step of uh, one and move from one to uh, to sixteen. So one, two, three, four, five, and filter the image with all these uh, with with all these filters. So that enables really uh, a high expressivity of the um, of the uh, of these tools. Okay. okay. Uh, so this is it, and you have to click OK, and then you can re retrain and see if the, the, the method is uh, any better than it was um, before. Also, uh, as explained in the course, uh, this method is uh, computing uh, different uh, decision tree, and these decision tree are taking a majority voting in the end, so you have access to the probability map. So this is a probability map of belonging to the class of background, and this is the probability map of belonging to the class of uh, nest, the nested part, and this is the probability map of belonging to the seed. So if, uh, by looking at this, you will realize that some of the parts are likely to become noise because they are maybe uh, a little bit uncertain, so this probability map gives you an idea of where you should maybe add a little bit more of annotation in order to help the classifier if you want to retrain it again. Yeah. So this is very useful uh, 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 features that you are likely to, uh, to use. So we have seen uh, here that uh, it was possible to process uh, this image with a pure classical way, expert-driven um, uh, way, where the knowledge of the expert enables to, to um, fastly pick up the right uh, filters, while in the other uh, case, uh, we were uh, data-driven. The experts were just providing some information about the location of the different classes. So it can be a non-image processing expert, but maybe a biologist, uh, an expert in biology. And um, but just by indicating uh, where uh, these um, elements would, uh, would stay, then uh, you have uh, an answer based on the random forest of the, the way card. So you can uh, find uh, a little bit more um, uh, powerful uh, tools with uh, Elastic, uh, which is uh, an alternative to Weka. Um, Elastic is a software. I will pick up it right here. And you have, uh, you can download it. Uh, it's similar to uh, Imagi. Actually, the engine, the first engine in terms of uh, image processing, was the same as Weka. And if you have a look on our website, you will see that we we provide some uh, tutorial on how to start to get started with uh, with Imagi. And I encourage you to uh, with Elastic. And I encourage you to to have a look to uh, uh, to this. Yeah. Um, also, um, so this is it for, uh, for Elastic, and, um, and uh, for this video, I maybe I can uh, highlight you the fact that um, uh, some, uh, you, you, if you move to uh, Elastic or Weka, meaning machine learning driven um, Image processing, uh, you have to take care of the fact that um, somehow uh, the result may be dependent on the quality of the annotation. So if the, if the annotation is not correct, um, maybe, uh, of course, you, you will have a wrong uh, result. But 
uh, it's even uh, more tricky than uh, than this because if uh, for for different annotations, maybe sometimes the the result can be a little bit different. So a way to compute the viability of the of, uh, or the influence of the annotation is to do something that we did in this paper, uh, which is uh, to maybe do correct annotation but slightly different and measure the variation of the result that we have. So here we were interested in segmenting the avascular part of uh, this uh, uh, retinal uh, images and you see that the two annotations are correct but uh, the, the results are not exactly the same so this variability is due to uh, somehow the sensitivity of the algorithm to uh, small variations although correct uh, of the annotation. So this is available in this paper uh, published in 2018. Here we are, so thanks again for watching this uh, video and uh, see you next time.